Hello and welcome to Home Park. Oh, how we've missed you. Good afternoon, you are watching Argyle TV. We are here pitch side at Home Park, ready for kickoff this afternoon, three o'clock. Uh, this is Plymouth Argyle against Gillingham this afternoon and it is the first home game back in the Theatre of Greens after about 18 months. We've got lots of exciting things coming up for you this afternoon before the match starts, including Ryan Hardy, some academy news, Neil Dusnip on his Olympic gold medal with the Canadian women's team, and of course, Argyle legend Hasni Aljafri is going to be here as well. Today's game will be available to watch for our international viewers and for domestic fans you can listen to the commentary uh, online as well through Argyle TV uh, to follow all the action on our website pafc.code.uk um, first though of course um, we need to talk about the tragic incident that unfolded in Plymouth on Thursday I'm sure you're all aware um, seeing it in the media um, Thursday Plymouth was rocked by scenes of a mass shooting that happened uh, only a few moments away from where we stand at Home Park. Um, obviously, to buy this. And of course, we will be doing a, a minute silence just before kickoff today. How can Argyle get involved, you know, with the community and supporting them through this time? 
Well, in many ways, Argyle already is involved. I've already spoken to a number of people today who have got personal connections with either victims or families. So uh, just being friends to them. And as a club, we're a friend to, to Kiam. So the minute silence will be our chance just to say we stand with you. And then I suppose when that whistle goes and the, the kickoff happens, I just, I'm looking forward to that cheer because this is what we need, isn't it? Times like this, we need a game of football and uh, a referee to shout at, although we wouldn't be shouting at the referee. <laughs> no, but, some, uh, something to, to hopefully lift the mood. Uh, although, you know, while the atmosphere, I'm sure, will be very passionate here, there is kind of also the, the sombre tone that's been surrounding the whole city over the past 48 hours. Arthur, you're a chaplain here at the club, um, and people from all faiths or no faith at all will have obviously been touched by what's happened. Can you just expand on, on your role in the club in, and what faith and yourself offer can, can help people with? Yeah, I spoke to the chairman earlier. He, he likes to call it a pastor because I suppose in the States that's what we, they, they're used to. But it, the, the role of a pastor is the one who stands alongside people and helps them. So my role as chaplain, I sometimes call it sanctified loitering. I, I just get into conversations and in those conversations things come up. Uh, so just being around actually, sometimes I call it the emotional glue of the club. I'm just feeding in, uh, uh, being around, talking, and keeping that conversation going. Mm -hmm. and, and like you've said, you know, players, people that work here in the club have all been uh, affected by it. I mean, how, how do we, you know, as a unit, pro process what, what's happening, especially, you know, with the amount of fans that we're, we're having here today? Yeah, well, we had a prayer vigil at our church. It's, our church premises is right in the centre of Plymouth, so we thought we, we need to do something. There was lots going on in Keown, but we just wanted to open the doors. We lit some candles and we just, we prayed, but mostly we sat and we, we grieved with, uh, with the city. And I think that's one of the things we can do. You know, there's lots of talk, isn't there? And I'm sure over time, we'll start talking about some of the solutions, what's needed, what caused this. We'll look at all sorts of, uh, you know, things that went on and how we can stop it from happening again. And those conversations are valid. But for now, I think it's, I think talking is a little bit cheap right now, although it's good to, to process. I think actually what we need to do is just stand alongside each other and just feel sad for what's happened because it's a very, very sad, tragic thing. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And just to uh, reiterate the five names of the people uh, that were, that's what, that tragically lost their lives on Thursday, I'd just like to um, tell them to you if, if you didn't know, because those are the names that we should be remembering uh, after the events. And their names are Maxine, Lee, Sophie, Stephen, and Kate. And those are the five names that we at Argyle will be remembering it, and we as Plymouth as a whole will be remembering. Our, our thoughts are with Kiam as a community, they are with the families, and they are with Plymouth. Thank you, Arthur, for being with us uh, this afternoon ahead of the game. And um, we're just gonna, now move on to some club news. Uh, we'll be reading out um, the match news very shortly. Um, thank you, Arthur, again for coming here. We'll have Reese Wilmot coming up next. He is taking part in the commentary this afternoon. And uh, he'll be talking to us about some of the changes in the news team and things like that. But for now, let's have some highlights. Let's look back at Tuesday night, which was a fantastic 4-0 win in a second. We have got some team news graphics before we show that, which hopefully we can bring up on the screen now. I can see them. Well, I can't see them, but hopefully you can, which is very exciting. Oh, I'm being handed. Lovely. Thank you, Charlie. No, I haven't got that yet, which is lovely. So this is uh, showing up on screen now. I'll read you out the team news. Hopefully we can see on screen for you in goal this afternoon, Michael Cooper. Uh, wearing the number one shirt, of course. Jordan Hooten, James Wilson, Dan Scar, Ryan Broom, Joe Edwards, Ryan Hardy. Oh, Pilgrim Pete's popped up. Pete, stay there. We'll have a chat in a second. Uh, where did I get to? Joe Edwards, Ryan Hardy, Connor Grant, Brendan Galloway, Pantucci Kamara, and Luke Jeffcott. Now I am joined with both Pilgrim Pete and, <laughs> and Reese is here with me as well. Oh, we're, it's quite crowded is here, isn't it, this afternoon? How are you doing, Pete? You okay? Yeah, good. Right, over to you, Reese. Uh, having a look at the, the team news that we've got in front of us, what, what do you make of it uh, this afternoon? Yeah, as per um, expected, I would, I would have said, um, following Tuesday's good result. 
Um, I don't think there's anything too unexpected. Obviously, uh, we've got no no Danny in there. Yeah, I was going to um, say Ryan Ryan swapping in for, for yeah, Danny there. Yeah, I think there. Danny's picked up a knock and uh, and, and he's obviously uh, unavailable. And they brought in Ryan Broom. Um, I wouldn't say it's like for like, but very similar. Uh, and we'll play the same system, I would imagine. Okay, well, we will uh, come back with Reese and talk a little bit more about the team. Now let's have a look at that amazing 4-0 win that Argyle had last week. Here it is. And our reward for that very good 4-0 win is an away game against Swansea in the next round of the Carabao Cup. Um, Ryan Hardy was on top form with two goals relatively early on in that game. Um, he's been speaking to Argyle TV about what it means to get off the mark so early. Um, but before we play that clip, Rhys, how important is it to you know score goals nice and early in the game? Uh, nice and early in the game and nice and early in the season, really. Um, it gives great confidence. To, uh, to a striker. I think of all the positions on the field, um, strikers scoring goals uh, and, and gaining confidence uh, enhances the, the team and their own performance. And I think um, getting away early in the game uh, sets you up for the game. And I think getting away early in the season uh, sets you up for that season coming as well. Lovely. We'll take a look at what Ryan Hardy thought of it and then we'll chat about Luke Jeffcott as well, who scored one of the other goals. Here it is. <laughs> It's massively important for the confidence and uh, I think tonight I'd like to dedicate my goals to my stepdad who unfortunately passed away on Friday. Uh, I got the sad news when I was travelling to the to the Rotherham game so the goals were for him. I know he'd have been watching me tonight so I'd just like to put that, put that one in there. But as you said, as a, as a striker it's important to get some goals and uh, that's hopefully got the confidence going of that. No, I think your stepdad would be proud for that because uh, it, was a, it was a top performance. We finally have a, a league game back at Home Park, which we're hoping will be almost a sellout. Um, you must be looking forward to that. That's what, as I said earlier, that's what football is all about: playing in front of the fans. And um, if you're saying it's not a, a sellout, well, that's what we're all looking forward to. It's Saturday, Tuesday, home games as well, mm -hmm. and so two home games on the bounce. Let's give the fans a show. You can see some of the players just walking onto the pitch behind us, but back to. Uh, what we've just looked at with Ryan Hardy, Luke Jeffcott, of course, scoring another one of the four goals that we saw last week. Uh, the team linked up quite well together, didn't they, on Tuesday? What, what did you make of it? Yeah, certainly. Um, I, I think their, their play on Tuesday was it was exceptional, to be honest. Um, some people say it was a, a second string Peterborough team, but um, Peterborough would have a squad capable of playing in the championship. So every player they put on the pitch would have been good. And I think we've uh, 
we've shown a real, real good, good game of football, and, and Luke was part of that, and, and obviously Ryan as well up top. Uh, they seem to find their feet a little bit together, um, so it all goes well for the for the rest of the season, hopefully. And of course, in terms of uh, crowd and fan spirit as well, getting a, a four nil victory so early on in this in the season, you know, one of the first few games that we've had back. How important is that to the Green Army? Yeah, massive for the for the club to get into the next round of the uh, the, 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 the the League Cup. Um, winning four nil away doesn't happen very often so you you, you take it it gives you great confidence to know that you can score that many goals away from home at a championship football club um, and I think that'll give confidence to the whole football club not just the team yeah and hopefully we'll have some similar scenes today uh, I'm sure that you've seen as me and Reese have been talking the Gilliam side have come onto the pitch I mean you know this is the first game back on home turf so are we hoping for a similar view of what we saw last week, perhaps? Yeah, hopefully. Better than Saturday. Yes, um, well, yes. Uh, but a winning home start is what we need. Um, and I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't, following on from the performance Tuesday. I said, like I said, confidence is everything in football. I think we've got it now. Uh, and they'll be looking forward to getting out there and playing and, 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 and getting home, a home result for the, for the home crowd. And I know, Reese, you're going to be doing the commentary. I'll just uh, take a moment to pause here because uh, the Argyle squad are just now coming onto the pitch. Uh, you'll see uh, they're all wearing Plymouth Together uh, shirts. Of course, we spoke to Arthur Good a little bit earlier on uh, in our, in our pre-match Argyle TV here, spoken about the Thursday night's incident. Um, Plymouth was the scene of a very tragic shooting, which saw... Uh, five victims lose their lives so Argyle team now being met with rounds of applause wearing their white Plymouth together shirts uh, with the green heart on them it's it's going to be a very emotional day here I think at Argyle wouldn't you say Reese? yeah yeah um, tragic events on on Thursday um, hopefully that the football club can can give the city something to shout about today yeah with a nice home win and, and it gives everybody an opportunity to, to take their mind off what happened on that tragic night and, um, and, and hopefully they can enjoy a day out at, at a game of football. Yeah, and as I was saying before, you're doing the commentary today, so I don't want to keep you for too much longer because I know you've got other places to be. But uh, very quickly, on our guard TV, we're, we're not just bringing you kind of the, the first team and the women's team, we've also got the academy to look at as well. So here's a little clip with uh, Carlo Garside and we're going to talk to Reese about him after you have a look. My name's Carlo. Okay. Uh, I've been at the club nearly 10 years now. I uh, joined at under nines and I'm now a second year apprentice here. What is it about Argyle, Carlo, that, that you like and like being around and like playing for? Well, I, I've always grew up in Plymouth. It's all I've known. I grew up supporting Argyle. I uh, used to come as a kid. Dad used to bring me up and obviously I've always dreamt of playing out there. Tell us a little bit about you as a as a player then for someone who hasn't seen you play. What are you about? What do you like doing? Uh, yeah, so I'm a centre midfielder. I play more defensive, but I like getting on the ball, like tackling and running around, just a standard midfielder really. Do you have any players in the current either setup at Argyle or potentially Premier League, anything like, like that that you look at and, and try and model your game on? Uh, yeah, obviously I look at um, Houghton, the new player that's came in, and I idolise him. I think he's really good on the ball, uh, really good positioning, so I like to watch him and try and bring him into my own game. Yeah, it's probably not a bad one to try and no. model yourself on. He's done all right since he's he's come in. You mentioned you've been at Argyle for such a long time. Um, did you used to come and watch Argyle when you were a kid as well? Yeah, always. Every weekend, used to come and watch. Used to love it. Atmosphere. It's just what you dream of playing now. Looking at the academy at the moment, obviously, under 18s had a great season last year in, in the Merit League. And, and you now look at the likes of Rhys Shirley, who's up and featuring with the first team. Finley Krask is, is up there as well. I think Ethan Mitchell went up to train and was part of the match day experience. What do you feel when you see lads that you've obviously been playing with getting that opportunity yeah it's brilliant because obviously you're training with them every day and i feel there's been a, a massive shift in the academy ever since uh, the gaffer ryan Lowe came in he wants to play young players and as a player that drives you it really motivates you what is, has, has, has said, ryan said to you maybe personally or, or as a group in terms of this is the pathway what's he said uh really he's just he's just gone about um consistently performing in the under 18s and when he gets a chance to watch, obviously you've got to, you've got to shine. But it's, it's keeping it simple, really, like be consistent every week. I mentioned the, 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 the kind of a 
scholars that are in there at the moment, but you, you, you look at the side in general and you've got Rands in there, you've got Jeffers in there, you've got Mike Cooper. There is now kind of this identity, I suppose, isn't there? Uh, which I'm guessing for you is, is a good thing, thinking there is that pathway. I can I could maybe one day be there. Yeah, definitely. It motivates you. You can see like it is possible. Like You can be there one day. You're watching Jeff Cott score all those goals. Randy, it's just you idolise them, really, and you want to be where they are. I suppose you'd be battling with Adam for a position in that, in that midfield, wouldn't you? Yeah, maybe. Obviously, I've, I've known Rand for quite a long time. I used to watch him play when he was younger because he was the same age as my brother. And Yeah, he's a really good player. And hopefully, it'll be healthy competition, maybe. Here's, here's one for you. Uh, it's always a difficult question to answer right at the start of the season. Um, what, are you, what are your aims, Kyle? What are, you, what are you wanting to do this year? What's your personal goal? Well, as a team, we want to go in. We've got goals to win the league. Uh, but personally, I want to just play consistently in the 18s. And if I get a chance at the first team, I want to take it and make a mark. An exclusive interview with Carlo Garside there, who's a member of Argyle Academy. Rhys, you'll know Carlo. What's he like? Yeah, Carlo's a great lad. Uh, he's a second year, second year um, apprentice at the moment. Um, midfield, hard working, uh, great application, uh, definitely a leader. Um, and he's got every opportunity, I think, if he keeps on working like he is at the moment to, to further himself in the game and hopefully at Plymouth Argyle. We've seen a couple of features for him in the first team so far. What do you make of that? Yeah, he's played or been involved in the pre-season games, yeah. uh, or one or two. Um, I think he did well. Um, it's tough for the youngsters when they when they get get uh, get their opportunity to 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 play in front of the manager, etc. You know, it's something that they they need a little bit of time with and to get used to. Um, but I think uh, Carlo did did very well on, on on those occasions. Are we likely to see more of this happening? You know, with the academy players getting involved in the first team. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if you look at the bench today on the first team game, there's f four or five that have uh, that have come out of the the academy quite recently, um, and I think the the manager um, he's got great faith in the academy, and he'll uh, he'll he'll put players in if he thinks they're good enough, and if they can cope with this sort of atmosphere like today, then they've got every opportunity of getting getting put into a squad. Amazing. Thank you very much for talking to us here on Argyle TV, Reese. You might be able to hear there's a lot of applause happening in the background. Reese, you're off to do commentary with the lovely Rob McNichol this afternoon, so I won't keep you for very much longer other than to say, uh, are you looking forward to it and what do you expect from the game if, if you dare most, make a yeah, judgment? Most definitely looking forward to it. First home game of the season. It's a special occasion, I think. Um, and I think it's going to be a, a, a wonderful home win for, for Plymouth Argyle and for the Plym Plymouth City. Amazing. Thank yeah, you very much, no Reese. Thank you. So we're going to go to another VT now. We've just spoken about the Argyle Academy. So let's hear from the under-18s manager, Darren Way, on how he feels the academy is going to go this season. This new team it is forming together. I think the second years have done exceptionally well, um, integrating the, the first years. Uh, they've done a lot of team bonding sessions together to, to build those relationships. And, uh, you know, everything seems to be going well. Yeah, that is quite a, a kind of quirk, I suppose, of junior football, isn't it? Is when you, you get that second batch coming in, the younger batch coming in. As a, as a coach or as a manager, do you have a, much impact input into kind of how they all integrate and mix or do you leave it to the players? Well, it's interesting you say that because with the, the lads being off on their school holidays at the moment, we've had the 15s and 16s um, uh, come in and train with us. And uh, we only probably done that twice last year. So it's good to get that integration so that when they do jump in from 16 to 18, uh, one, they know the intensity and the level that they play at, two, they, they've already Let's built on, a, a relationship because they've they've spent a period of time together and uh, you end up with a, a stronger culture and a, and a real strong environment and uh, you know and that's what we found um, you want that to happen as quick as you can but there are different characters some quiet ones some louder ones and you know it's making sure you get the mix right so they all you know they all they, they all take part in in any of the sessions that they're involved in. So I want to go back to one of the things you said in the previous answer about, you know, that the changing of um, kind of the way you go up and travel to games so you're more prepared. Is that kind of to try and implement a bit more professionalism, I suppose? Get it get the guys used to 
what a match day, if they get up into the first team, might be like. Travel's a massive part of a of, of first team environment. You, you've seen they've gone to Rotherham um, and then they've gone to Peterborough away. But I don't think uh, over a period of time we create enough of that at youth level. Mm. Um, you know, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. And then having to play under pressure. And, uh, you know, we are trying to win uh, now. And uh, it, winning to us is, is important as a group. So, you know, in terms of that preparation, in terms of them being mindful of getting up at five, five o'clock, making their way to the ground, the nutritional aspect of it, which is, is vital, what time they eat, um, you know, the amount of fluids that they consume, can all affect their performance. And, uh, you know, we want to be a good team that travel away from home. And, uh, you know, that's what really, we, you know, we focused on this season. Let's have a look at the season this year then. We mentioned it's, it's just started. Um, how, how do you see the other teams potentially in this? How do you see the competition that you'll have to be playing throughout the, the Alliance League? It will be difficult. There's the new rule now where three under-19s can, can play at youth level. So depending on how many 19-year-olds that they play um, at youth level will be, you know, some clubs may use that, some clubs may have their under-19s out on, on loan. Uh, we're not too sure how that's going to work this year because it is the, the first year that that's been introduced. Um, but we're excited about the season. Um, we've made huge progression uh, within the, the academy. Uh, the 16s have just been away and, and won a, you know, at Oakham in a, in a festival. So the, there's some real good stories that's coming out. And uh, you know, as I said to you before, it's all joined up thinking from the top all the way down through the academy. And uh, there's a real good feel about the place. And uh, you know, we just want to make sure we maintain our performances and develop players along the way. Um, it's good to see Ree Shirley, it's good to see Finley Krask. I think we're very, very respectful of the, the manager and the first team staff, the, the amount of conversations that I'm having with, with Kevin Nance, um, with, in, with the integration of the, the A-teams to the first team. And uh, we're very grateful, you know, Middlesbrough, what a, what a fantastic mm. um, achievement to see um, that. You know the pitch flooded with youth players, and uh, we're appreciative of what the first team had done um, to, to give our lads the chance. The under 18s drew one all as well yesterday against Oxford United. Now, don't forget if you want to get in touch with us on social media, we are pretty much everywhere Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you want to go to at only one Argyle. I'm just having a look on my uh, little phone. You'll be pleased to know no red case anymore. I listened. The feedback was good. We're going neutral. We've had lots of green hearts uh, coming in on social media, which is very nice to see. The green heart has kind of become a little bit of emblem for Plymouth in the last 48 hours in response to uh, the really tragic shootings that we've spoken about earlier. Um, so very nice to see the Green Army uh, getting involved in supporting each other with that. I can see uh, Ricky the Raccoon has arrived at Home Park, ready for the match this afternoon against Gillingham. Um, for anybody that's wondering what that even means there's somebody sat I reckon all the way over there uh, and they've brought with them a little cuddly raccoon that's wearing full Argyle kit so we'd very much like to see that uh, at Grooves on Twitter is saying uh, win this for them lads which is very nice to see as well and uh, a lot of the hashtag Plymouth together as well coming in now of course, we've mentioned if you want to get in touch with us on social media, how to do it at only one Argyle. Might be able to read out some more of your uh, tweets and comments at halftime too. Um, but for now, international fans, you can watch the whole game right here on Argyle TV. Kickoff against Gillingham is at 3 p.m., which I make to be half an hour's time. Um, for domestic viewers, uh, there is audio commentary of the match, and that is being run by Reese, who we just spoken to a moment ago, and our commentator. Rob McNichol and you can follow the game as well pafc.co.uk and on Twitter they'll be tweeting all the updates they've got all like gifs in very well put together uh, social media images and I hope to see lots of them um, and we get a win today but right now we're here with 
Neil Dusnip, who's the director of football. Now, Neil, you've had a very good uh, couple of weeks. I, I mean, I would intro you, but I think you've you've earned it. So, <laughs> t- tell us what you've been up to. Uh, well, I've had the uh, fantastic experience of going out to Japan uh, to take part uh, as a coach in the Olympic Games. I was asked if I would help uh, mentor and assist the head coach of the Canadian women's national team. Uh, And can you believe we won the gold medal, which was amazing uh, because we weren't supposed to. uh, So we we gathered a lot of momentum and uh, we ended up winning it, which was fantastic. So I am essentially stood mere centimetres away from a, a gold medal winning Olympian, part of the team. Well, well, I guess, yeah. yeah. Sounds good, I doesn't mean, it? you know, you may not have been playing in the women's football match, but you were there, you were part of it. What, what was it like? Uh, well, first of all, Japan was amazing. Uh, I'd never been before, so I was really keen to go and see the country. Uh, it was difficult to see properly because it was very restrictive due to COVID. Uh, but uh, experiences like going on the bullet train were like something else. Uh, apparently, it would have taken us five hours by coach. It took us wow. an hour and ten minutes on the train, which is uh, pretty special. Uh, and then to play in all the stadiums that were built for the World Cup in 2002 was also pretty special. Uh, one of the games we played was in an indoor stadium, uh, which was 50,000 seaters, all, all air-conditioned which was, uh, wow, Yeah. Uh, as nice as Home Park is, and it <laughs> definitely is, uh, those stadiums were pretty special. A little bit different, perhaps. A little bit different. Now, am I right in saying there was a penalty shootout uh, that, that took place for the Canadian women's team? The, that must have been quite a nervy experience. Yeah, the, there were two, actually. So we managed to overcome Brazil in the quarterfinal on penalties. I mean, just on paper, that is a mean feat in itself, isn't well, it, going against Brazil? Well, that's pretty good. Uh, we upset Abner, who's our Brazilian physiotherapist here. Uh, and then we, we managed to win the actual final against Sweden on penalties, which was incredibly nerve-wracking, uh, real good fun, very exciting, and I can say that because we won. If we'd have lost the penalties, I might be saying something different. <laughs> of course, yeah. Now, we know football's very big over here. How big is it in Canada? What, what does this gold medal mean for, for Canada as a country? So, uh, it, it's growing still uh, in Canada. The women's game in particular, uh, they're hoping now that they will use uh, the momentum game from the gold medal to form uh, a national league, a professional league for the players, which is something that they don't have in the women's game. So, with a bit of luck, it'll, it'll add. Uh, they have lots of people playing, but right now they need to go to the USA or indeed England or Europe uh, to play their soccer. Okay, so if we need some of them maybe to go elsewhere to pursue their football soccer goals, managed to convince any of them to come over to Argyle Ladies? I asked every single one. (laughs) They all said yes. Okay. But when they realise what the budget is, uh, they, they kind of talked about the weather and other things. So that's something we've got to work on. Yeah, but I mean, the hoe in the sun, Neil, I mean, that's, it's, it sells itself, really. It does indeed. I'll work on, I'll get back to them. <laughs> yeah, get back to them. See see if you can work your magic. Um, it's very nice to have you back with us here at Argyle today. First home game of the season. What are you, what are you expecting? What are you looking forward to? Well, I was lucky enough to get back from Japan in time to go to Peterborough with Ryan and the staff uh, and the players, and they played exceedingly well, as well as I've seen them play in the last two years. So the challenge will be to, to maintain that performance. Uh, what we do know about Gillingham is they're really awkward to play against. They'll be quite big, strong, direct, uh, and really the opposite to the way that we want to play. So it will be a real contrast of styles. Uh, it'll be really tough, but hey, we've got the Green Army back in the stadium. Uh, we're ready. The sun's nearly shining. We'll be OK. Can we hope for some of your gold medal uh, <laughs> luck to rub off on, on the team here today? Do you, w- would you be willing to predict a score for us? Uh, no, I would not. <laughs> You're playing it safe. Uh, no, no, other than I'm really positive. Uh, and if we can reproduce Tuesday night's performance, we'll be fine. Thank you very much, Neil. Neil Duznip, who has won a gold Olympic medal at the Tokyo Olympic Games uh, this summer with the Canadian women's football team. Well done again, Neil. Fantastic stuff. Um, Our opponents today are Gillingham. They are hopefully over my shoulder that you'll be able to see them. 
and uh, they've made it they've also made it through to the second round of the Carabao Cup just like we have uh, they went through on Tuesday night so here are their highlights from they went all the way to a penalty shootout just saying we didn't um, but here are the highlights uh, from that game Winning 10-9 on penalties there, and they will be going on to the second round of the Carabao Cup, uh, playing Cheltenham Town in round two. They drew their opening game of the season against Lincoln, uh, a tough team in this division. So let's have a look at the Gillingham team now. I'm back here with Reese, who I kind of, oh, well, I kind of evicted you a bit early. I thought you were off to do commentary, but very feeling very fortunate that you're you're back to me. Um, so Gillingham team. Uh, Reese, maybe me and you, we can take in turns going through it. Um, I'll do the I'll do the, the first five or so, and then you can yep. do the second five. It'll be lovely. Good. So in goal for Gillingham this afternoon, we have got Jamie Cumming, then Ryan Jackson, David Totonda, Stuart O'Keefe, Max Aimer, and Jack Tucker. Hit me, Reese, with the rest of them. Yeah. Then the captain, Carl Dempsey, uh, John Akindi, Vadane Oliver, Daniel Phillips, and Mustafa Cariol. Lovely. So that's the Gillingham team. Now, as an Argyle fan myself, and as you are, I don't know too much about them, but as the football expert, <laughs> absolutely out of the two of us, what, what do you predict from, from this lineup against Argyle's lineup? Yeah, looking at the, the players they've selected there, it looks like a 4-4-2. Four, 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 um, I know a little bit about the, the front two. Uh, John Akindi, uh, very old-fashioned, big number nine, if you like. Um, holds the ball up well. And Verdane Oliver had a, a tremendous end of season last year, scoring 12 goals in the last 15 games, I believe. Uh, Kyle Dempsey, the captain, he plays uh, on the right-hand side, very good player. Um, other than that, I uh, don't know too much about the other players, but I, I know that it's going to be a, a tough, tough game because Gillingham are a tough team uh, with a tough manager. Lovely. If we just uh, give you all a reminder as well of the Argyle team, which should be coming up on your screen uh, right now. We've got Michael Cooper in goal, Jordan Hooten, James Wilson, Dan Scar, Ryan Broom, Joe Edwards, Ryan Hardy, Connor Grant, Brendan Galloway, Pantucci Kamara and Luke Jeffcott. Now, Reese, where will Argyle need to be aware of? In what areas will Gillingham be threatening them today um, if if memory serves me right very good uh, set piece team very strong uh, uh, free kicks and um, definitely a, a threat uh, in our box uh, from corners uh, so it'll be a, a tough day defending um, but we've started well defensively and the back three that we've uh, we've brought in 
uh, I think will make a real big difference to how we defend this season. Lovely. Thank you, Reese. Now, I'm going to um, hopefully not prematurely evict you from the Argar TV again, but you are probably now very soon going to the commentary box. Yeah. So thank you uh, for your time with us. We are going to be joined by Argar legend, Hasni Al Joffrey, in a second. Um, I think we might be swapping you for him, Reese. So no thank you very much for no joining me again. Uh, lovely to speak to you. Let's get Hasni in here. We'll do a bit of a trade off. And I'll just remind you uh, while we are waiting for Hasni to join us and ask him some questions that if you want to get involved on social media, at only one Argyle. We are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, and of course, uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and of course see what you're up to we've already had I can't remember the name of the raccoon but there's a raccoon up uh, up in the stand behind us hello Hasley's with us how are you doing? Um, Argyle legend <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you today I'm really good i um, excited to be here um, it's fantastic to be at home park I've not been here for, for a few years and it's a uh, I say for the first home game it's always a, an exciting time so yeah looking forward to the to the game Fantastic. Now, you are a former defender for Argyle. Uh, just give us a recap of, of your time here at the club. Uh, well, I joined in 2002. I left 2007. I think in the five years I was here at Argyle, I think the club were, were just progressing slowly, but surely they were they were climbing up the leagues. And then, yeah, I think we we had a really strong team and the foundations with, with Paul Stoke was, was very special. And we won promotion. And like I say, when Paul left, it was the club was in a really healthy position. So... I say in the five years the club just grew and grew. It was a it was a great certainly a great time for me to be at Plymouth Argyle. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I have to say I think your era of Argyle was probably when I just started to get into football. Is I, I can't I dare even remember how old I was then. But it, you know it was yeah. a fantastic time for the club. What are you up to these days? Well, I went I was very fortunate. I went into coaching when I retired just over ten years ago. Um, been working at Manchester United for, for 10 years in their academy um, and just recently uh, left to go and work for the PFA. So the PFA are the Professional Football Association, so it's the union for all the professional players and I'm part of the coaching department where you know, you're know almost uh, looking at coaching from a different perspective and helping the coaches on their own journey opposed to the players. So yes, it's exciting, it's something new to me and I think after being at Man United for 10 years, it's it was like... You know, I was ready for a new challenge and I think this now will provide a, an exciting new chapter in, yeah. in the next part of my life. Is that something that you you knew you wanted to pursue from when you stepped back from being on the pitch? I think, I mean, I was captain quite a lot um, in most of my clubs. So I had some kind of leadership, I guess, skills or people thought of that. And then I think I've always been conscious and keen on, on football in general anyway. So I've, I've always been the type to watch games. And I think when I retired, it's football that I all kind of only knew. and. I was very lucky to, to get the opportunities that I got early doors at Oldham Athletic and then being offered a job at Manchester United. It was, yeah. was, uh, yeah, was kind of life-changing, really, because it gave me 10 years of, of development and learning and um, being around world-class um, educators. So, yeah, I've had a, I've, I've had a very lucky um, and exciting last 10 years. It's been it's an amazing time for me, yeah. Yeah, well, big name Manchester United as well on the yeah. football scene, of course. But, you know, the big name here today, obviously, Plymouth Argyle. You've had an incredible time with us. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, but do you have any standout memories from, from your time? Do you know what? There was there was a lot of great times playing for Plymouth Argyle. And um, I guess the big one for, for me was when we won the league against QPR here. Um, it was such a, an exciting day, full house. Um, the crowd was amazing. Obviously, if we won the game, we knew we, we were going to win, win the league and get promoted. It was, it was, it was an incredible day. So I would say that day stands out for me um, in terms of uh, the collective of winning, a, winning the league. But then personally, I was captain against Real Madrid, so that's not a bad thing to have <laughs> as well. So yeah, a lot, a lot of great times I had at Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean that noise is certainly a welcome noise back inside yeah. this stadium. Um, I mean, the cheers would have been even louder than that yeah. uh, back at the times you've just spoken about. Do you think the team we've got today is, is capable of pulling off something similar to the team you were in? Yeah, I think I think it's an exciting team and I think um, Ryan Lowe's got a, a good team there that is, that's got goals in it. You know, this, like it proved um, the other night when they scored four goals, there's goals in the team, it's exciting, it's uh, positive, you want to play the right way and I think, yeah, most definitely. And I think 
having a crowd here at home park is like an extra man. And so I'm pretty sure today, you know, with, with the Argyle crowd and a good performance, it could be a really special day for Plymouth. Yeah, well, they do say the Green Army is the, is the 12th man, don't yeah. they? So that's brilliant. Hasni, I'm going to leave you to enjoy the game. But just before you go, first of all, thank you for joining us on Argyle TV. And lastly, what are your predictions for today's match? I said 3-0. Uh, I think 3-0 okay. uh, win today. Be, I think the lads will hopefully get off to a quick start, get a quick goal and build some confidence and, and just go and we'll have a great day. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. already done a 4-0 in the last week, yeah, so I'm, I'm so fine. why not? 3-0, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> listen, thanks for having me. Uh, no, thank you for coming. Is, I always find it a special occasion when I come here, so thank you. Lovely. Brilliant to talk to you. Hasni Old Joffrey, Argyle legend, uh, stepping off now to go and enjoy the match. Uh, of course, no longer playing, so he'll get to relax uh, up in the sand. And, uh, and see what's going on. We're going to have a little look at some of the fixtures that are happening elsewhere around League One today. Uh, should be on the screen for you, so let's have a little readout of them. The other games in the Sky Bet League One this afternoon are Accrington versus Cambridge, AFC Wimbledon versus Bolton, Burton v Ipswich, Cheltenham v Wickham, Lincoln v Fleetwood, MK Dons versus Sunderland, Morecambe versus Shrewsbury, Oxford versus Charlton, Portsmouth versus Crewe, Sheffield Wednesday against Doncaster, Wigan versus Rotherham, but most importantly, Plymouth Argyle versus Gillingham here live at Home Park. Kickoff in just over 10 minutes time, three o'clock here at Home Park. We will keep you up to date with all the scores uh, on Argyle TV. Now the season has begun. Um, and we're nearly there. So 525 days it's been since Argyle uh, was last playing in front of a crowd here at Home Park. I'm just going to try and not get wiped out by uh, the goal, which is uh, fly, <laughs> flying past me in a minute. Um, OK, so the last time we had uh, crowds here, it was against Macclesfield and it was a 3-0 win. So can we do something similar today? Hasney uh, believes that we can and uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you a, a nice, joyous celebration from Home Park. Don't forget, international view you can watch the game uh, here on Argyle TV. Domestic viewers, it is available on audio. And we have Reese and Rob up in the commentary box doing that for you. Um, we're going to be handing over to those guys in the commentary box very shortly. Just before we do, uh, I'd like to remind you that there will be a one minute silence taking place just before kickoff. That is in memory of the five victims of the Plymouth shooting, which happened here on Thursday. Um, it's a very somber mood around Plymouth, but hopefully here at Home Park, we'll be able to celebrate uh, those five people and pay tribute to them as they deserve. So that will be coming up just before kickoff. Hopefully up there somewhere in uh, the commentary stand, Rob and Reese are getting ready. So let's go now to the VT uh, before the game. So let's take a look at the best goals we've scored last season. Here it is. So we'll open up the League One campaign against Blackpool here next weekend. But here's Newbell, oh, he's taken that superbly! What a finish! And Wall on the edge of the penalty area, he's got it over him there, and oh into the back God. of the net. It's a terrific free kick from Connor Grant. That what puts the game to the bed. Kick. What a free kick that is. Um, just saying just before there, like about about the ability this kid's got. It's, it's a great left foot and um, wow, what a uh, what a free kick that is. That'd be one he'll dine out on for a while, I'm sure. Oh. In the previous 13 trips to Sunderland, the last victory back in 2006, and they've got a chance here to take the lead straight away. They have done. Joe Edwards, the captain, leading by example. Sunderland were only level for five minutes. Looking to 
Get it back again here, Conor Grant taking a little step inside, went for goal! Goodness me! It's another stunning finish from Plymouth Argyle, and they've retaken the lead. Conor Grant gets a third goal for Plymouth Argyle, and surely one of the best. Took a little step back inside the defender and bent it beyond Truman. Wonderful. Queens of hand ball from Plymouth. Nothing given. And now here comes the counter attack. It's Ennis coming down this right side once again. Niall Ennis has options. Jeff God's there. It's 2 0 to Plymouth from one end to another. And Argyle have doubled their leads. Best of passes and they played themselves into trouble here. Kamara to the edge of the area. Edwards is going to have a go. And he's won it for Plymouth. This incredible game. And Argyle have this free kick, which is uh, about 20 yards inside the Lincoln half. Cooper will deliver it high, looping towards Watts at the far post. It's headed away. Nuble lays it oh, off. Finish. Freeze oh, the strike. What a goal that is. Volley from finish. 25 yards. Wow. Flew past Palmer and into the back of the net. And Argyle now 2 0 in front against Lincoln. What a finish that is from Reezy. I believe it hasn't even been raised and it was Ryan Hardy here he is on the ball now I thought it was way off and here's Connor Grant Connor Grant winds one out and Connor Grant has scored a belter to level it up at Stadium MK Plymouth Argyle are back level but that is controversial to say the least Newblade added from Colchester on a free. It's the corner taken short by George Cooper. Cooper gets it back, went for goal! Brilliant! George Cooper gets the opening goal of the game. 16 minutes gone. It came back to him from the corner. And he's completely outfoxed Tunnel, Connell Truman in the Wimbledon goal. Great finish. Challenges. Now Danny Mayer tiptoeing his way towards the edge of the area. It's still Danny Mayer. Brilliant goal. Plymouth double their lead. Some great memories there of last season. Some fantastic goals. But it's talk about.